Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with G Suite and Cloud Identity. My name is Sriram, and I'm a product manager at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be walking through one of the top questions we get from customers. Which second factor authentication method should I choose? It is now well known that passwords alone are not sufficient to protect your online identity. Two-factor authentication, also called two-step verification within Google products, has become a part of security hygiene. And we recommend that you consider enabling two-step verification for all of your users. Google supports a rich variety of 2SV methods. SMS and voice codes involve receiving one-time use passcodes, either as an SMS text or an automated voice call. Backup codes are one-time passwords that can be printed by the user and the printout can be taken to places where other forms such as a phone cannot be taken in. App-based OTPs and, and mobile push are other forms of uh, similar 2SV methods. FIDO U2F keys are in a separate category by themselves. They were pioneered at Google and were designed from the ground up to be resistant to phishing. We'll look at each of these in a little more detail. Using any of these supported 2SV methods increases the security of your user accounts. However, you should be aware that not all of them have the same security properties. From a security perspective, the available 2SV methods really fall into three buckets. SMS and voice are the most insecure among these options because they are vulnerable to what is known as SIM swap attacks and the SS7 protocol itself has some long-standing vulnerabilities. In addition to these two, the SMS codes can also be phished. Backup codes, TOTP-based authenticator apps, and the mobile push form a, in a second category of, of 2SV methods. All of these can also be phished. Increasingly, phishing kits are easily available on the internet, which makes all of these methods not suitable for your highest risk users. FIDO-based U2F keys, which are designed to be phishing resistant, are really the answer for uh, your phishing problems. Now, as an admin, you would categorize your users into one of these three buckets and apply the appropriate policies in the admin console. Let's look at how you would do that. As an admin, let us say you log into your admin console. You have three organizational units, one for all of your users, one for your medium risk users, and one for your high risk users. And as an admin, you have decided to enforce the use of 2SV for all of your users, prevent SMS for your medium risk users, and enforce the use of security keys only for your highest risk users. So how would you implement a policy like this in the admin console? You would first navigate to the security settings page. and go to the 2SV settings here. On this page, you see a familiar organizational unit tree on the left-hand side. So as I just explained, your, your decision is to enforce the use of any 2SV for the entire organization. So let's do that first. You would select the organizational unit on the left and click on Turn On Enforcement From Date. And you select uh, sometime in the future, let's say July 1st, 2019, what this allows you to do is your users get some amount of time of, to enroll their second factors. And once this date uh, is reached, and if, if there are any users who have not yet enrolled in their accounts, then they would be locked out, which is what you really want. And then you would click Save. Now, all users in your organization are required to use one of the supported 2SV methods. Now, we also said there is a, a high-risk OU and we want to enforce the use of SMS. Uh, we want to use a uh, use of 2SV except SMS. So we would first turn on enforcement from a future date. We would say July 1st. And then we would select the option that says any 2SV method except text and phone calls. And then you can press save. Now comes the third and final step of your plan, which is for your very high risk users. We decided to enforce only use of security keys for these users. So we would select an enforcement date for that for those users and select the only security key option for them. 
What happens to these users is Google keeps sending them a notification emails that you as an organizational admin have enforced to SV settings and that they have to enroll the appropriate method into their account before the prescribed date. So the key takeaway is Google supports a rich set of 2SV methods. Using any of these supported methods increases the user's account security for your organization. However, also be aware that the security properties vary from each method to another method. And Google recommends that you consider FIDO U2F keys for your highest risk users. Talking of protecting your highest risk users, we are very happy to share that the Advanced Protection Program is now available for enterprise accounts. The Advanced Protection Program was launched in 2017 to protect consumer Google accounts. The program consists of high security settings, which includes the enforcement of security keys and other settings, such as preventing unauthorized third-party apps accessing the user account data. Now, you can apply the same policies to your enterprise user accounts. Let's see how you would do that. As an admin, you would go back to the security settings page. and navigate down to a new card called the Advanced Protection Program. Here you would select one of the organizational units on the left, left pane, and you may allow those users to self-enroll into the Advanced Protection Program. And then you would press Save. Once you as an admin have allowed the users in that OU to self-enroll, the users may actually go through the self-enrollment process themselves. Let's see how that experience looks. This is Mary in her Gmail account. At this point, you have already allowed her to self-enroll into the Advanced Protection Program, so she would navigate to g.co slash advanced protection to start the enrollment process. And then clicks on this Get Started link. Before Mary can complete the enrollment, she should have two security keys. The Advanced Protection Program requires the user two security keys because if, for whatever reason, one key is lost or damaged, Mary still has another account to access her, another security key to access her account. If she loses or damages both of these accounts, you as an admin will have the option to allow her uh, into her account by uh, generating a backup code. So let's assume at this point you have distributed two security keys to Mary. So she would click on register security keys. And at this point, because this is a highly privileged action, we want to make sure that it is indeed Mary. And we require, require her to uh, confirm that by giving us the password again. So now Mary is prompted to register both of security keys. We will start with the first one. So Mary inserts her security key into the, into the USB port and taps it. and the first key is registered. She would repeat the process with the second key as well by inserting it into the USB port and tapping it. Now, given, now that both keys are registered, we show some informational message to Mary to understand what is going to happen to her account and then we complete the enrollment process. Now Mary is enrolled in the Advanced Protection Program, and for her security, to start with a clean slate, we log all sessions out, we log her out of all active sessions, and force her to sign back in, including the current machine. So here it is, Mary is being prompted for one of her security keys. and she is now able to access her account. If Mary has any trouble at any time being enrolled in the Advanced Protection Program, you as an admin can look up what her status is by visiting her page in the admin console. You would see a tag that says Advanced Protection. So this shows, this shows that Mary is a APP user. In addition, her page also has a new card called Advanced Protection and for whatever reason, you decide not 
to continue her in the, in the advanced protection program, you have the option of unenrolling her in this way. So we saw how you can allow users to self-enroll and how a user actually goes through the self-enrollment process and how to manage users who are in the program. In summary, the Advanced Protection Program is a convenient way for you to apply a bundle of high security setting for your most valuable users. Thank you for tuning in. Please visit cloud.google.com security for more content from Google Cloud Experts.